In order for the FBI to get that warrant to search President Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort, they needed to convince a judge that there was some probable cause to believe that there was evidence of a crime. On Friday, we finally saw the document where they laid out that case. Now, as expected, it was heavily redacted, but there is still a lot to digest in there. Part of it reads, quote, there is probable cause to believe that the locations to be searched at the premises, as in Mar-a-Lago, contain evidence, contraband, fruits of crime, or other items illegally possessed. There is also probable cause to believe that evidence of obstruction will be found at the premises. Probable cause to believe there was evidence of fruits of a crime. Possible evidence of obstruction. Now, what led investigators to believe there was this evidence at Mar-a-Lago? That is a question we need to ask, because they say it's largely because of what the FBI found in the 15 boxes that the National Archives actually retrieved earlier this year. Now, Friday's affidavit says that the boxes contained 184 documents with different classification markings. 67 were marked confidential, 92 secret, and 25 top secret. But agents also said that in the affidavit, they saw more specific notions on notations on those documents. Now, the notations are basically shorthands for where information came from or how the documents should be handled. And among the documents, at least one was marked human int control system. That marking traditionally describes the information from a confidential human intelligence source overseas. Agents also observed at least one marking labeled no foreign, meaning that no foreign national can view the document, and a marking labeled SI, special intelligence or intercepted communications. The agent who prepared the affidavit wrote, quote, based on my training and experience, I know that documents classified at these levels typically contain, contain NDI. NDI, that is short for national defense information. Let's turn now to Katie Fang, an MSNBC legal contributor and host of The Katie Fang Show, right here on MSNBC and Peacock. Katie, it's great to have you with us. So w when you read in this affidavit, as I just mentioned, about fruits of a crime and possible evidence of obstruction, give me your initial takeaways from this document. So let's start off, Eamon, by saying preliminarily their probable cause is not the same as reaching the burden of proof if you're the prosecution of obtaining a conviction. But probable cause was argued, was set forth by an FBI agent. I would highlight for you, Eamon, that this FBI agent, according to the affidavit, the unredacted portions, has background and experience in dealing with classified information, which suggests that this was not just some random FBI general agent that was used to be able to swear out this affidavit. David. But the probable cause that suggests that crimes have been committed and that the evidence of those crimes are found at Mar-a-Lago was exactly the basis for that FBI team to go in to be able to search the premises. Key to note, Eamon, is where they were looking for the evidence of the crime that included Trump's bedroom, his residential suite, this area called Pine Hall, which is the foyer leading into his personal residence or his personal bedroom, his office and other locations. And so contrary to what's been alleged by Donald Trump, this was not some random search that was conducted all over the premises of Mar-a-Lago. There was specific intel that was provided, and that obviously raises questions. The redacted portions of this affidavit, Eamon, would support the idea that there was someone or multiple people that gave this information to the FBI to substantiate and corroborate the fact that this classified information was located at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, let me ask you about that for a moment, um, because on Friday we got not only the redacted affidavit, but some of the other Justice Department filings explaining uh, what sort of things they redacted and why. And I want to read just from one of those filings. In part, it reads, the materials the government marked for redaction in the attached document must remain sealed to protect the safety and privacy of a significant number of civilian witnesses. A significant number of witnesses, as you just suggested, uh, perhaps sending that information to the FBI or cooperating with the FBI and helping them identify where those and what types of documents may be in Trump's possession. What might that suggest to you about the state of the investigation? 
that it's a lot farther along that Donald Trump comfortably wants it to be. Furthermore, we knew, Eamon, going into today that Judge Bruce Weinhardt was not going to force the DOJ's hand to make them disclose the identities of people that perhaps are serving as confidential informants for the federal government. Because think about it. It could be anybody from a family member to staff at Mar-a-Lago, because the location of these documents, it's not like it was just sitting out, although there is some suggestion it was in some places, but these are personal premises. These are personal locations for Donald Trump. I would presume that not anybody had access to Donald Trump's bedroom. I also would note for you as well that there's an argument that's been made by Donald Trump that he needs a special master, Eamon, to go through the documents that were contained in the materials that were seized pursuant to the search warrant because there's a concern that there's privileged documents there. However, if we, as we see in the unredacted portion of this affidavit, there was a separate privilege review team as well as a case team that was sent in to be able to do the review of this. And so in some ways, the DOJ has already and run the argument from Donald Trump that it is really necessary to get that special master. That's really the only legal filing we've seen so far. And really, at this point, the obstruction is something that really gives me some cause for pause, Eamon. You read about it at the beginning of this segment, because obstruction, as we know, sometimes the cover-up is worse than the crime. What was the obstruction in this case? Was it what was caught on the video surveillance tapes at Mar-a-Lago with Donald Trump moving things, having things taken out of boxes, reorganized? It really makes you wonder what's behind those redacted portions. Yeah, I know. And another part, the, another line that got our attention, Katie, uh, this part, the government has well-founded concerns that steps may be taken to frustrate or otherwise interfere with this investigation if facts in the affidavit were prematurely disclosed. Uh, it's not hard to imagine where the government's well-founded concerns might come from when you're dealing with Donald Trump. But what did you take away from that line? Obviously, the spoliation of evidence, the destruction of evidence, the perhaps intimidation of witnesses. I mean, it's this idea of trying to make sure that the investigation no longer has any type of space to be able to progress forward. Now, what people haven't had a conversation about, though, and Eamon, I know that you will, where does this go now? Now that we have this unsealed portion of the affidavit, what can we expect? And really, what we can expect is an indictment. I am not in the minority when I say that I reasonably anticipate that this level of probable cause would suggest that an indictment is not only likely, but soon to come quickly for Donald Trump. I was going to say, what a difference a few weeks ago. Uh, sorry, what a difference a few weeks make. Just a few weeks ago, we were talking about whether or not there was any traction on what the uh, Department of Justice was doing with Donald Trump. And here we are now talking about a possible uh, indictment after this significant development. Katie, stay with us. I want to bring in our other panelists. Uh, since we initially booked this as a political panel, I want to get their reaction to this significant story uh, first. Uh, Dino Badala is an MSNBC Daily columnist and the host of the SiriusXM radio show, The Dino Badala Show. Susan Del Percio is a Republican strategist. She's also an MSNBC political analyst. Uh, Susan, I'll start with you. Your reaction to what we have learned from this redacted affidavit. It's overwhelming in a lot of ways. We were prepared to not get a lot of information. That's what we were told all for this past week. Don't expect much. You know, the, the big secrets aren't going to be in there. They are not in there, but there were a few things that really caught my attention, especially the memo explaining the redaction of the affidavit. And that was their concern that the former president of the United States may engage in witness tampering or, because of his actions, government worker safety may be in play. Now, we know the latter is true because we've seen what happened in Ohio uh, just last week. So, and with an FBI field agent uh, office being um, basically attacked by a single armed individual. But this is the former president of the United States. So for all of the talk of how could you go in there, how is it possible that this is the case? The other thing, which isn't, I guess, not surprising, but still disturbing, is the amount of documents that were in his care that have come out so far, these goes to sources and methods. Donald Trump may think of them as just pieces of paper, but these are people's lives on the line. He is jeopardizing dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds of people's lives, men and women who go out there to protect our country. And he is just disregarding them and basically thinks they're nothing more than a piece of paper that's worth throwing in a closet. 
Dean, your thoughts on uh, what we've learned today, the significance of this redacted affidavit? Uh, let me pose the question that most Democrats are asking. Why is Donald Trump not under arrest? In what other first world nation can you do this? Can you wage a coup behind the scenes, incite a terrorist attack on our capital, mishandle classified documents, and walk free? In what country? In what first world nation? I'm not kidding. Like, you should say, joke around. I'm sincere. There's no place. This is unreal. You know, Merrick Garland's talked about the rule of law being important. That's just a, not just a concept. That has meaning. It's the idea that if you're powerful or powerless, if you're black or white or brown, you're all treated equally under the law. I cannot believe that if this was not Donald Trump, that DOJ would have allowed, they knew in February, according to the new filing, about a mass of classified documents. They would have waited all the way to August to get a search warrant. They should have treated him like anyone else and went in. Instead, they, gave, they did their best not to be political. Whatever they did, Trump was going to call it political. That's what he's doing. Donald Trump, and, and the point that was made by Susan when I was reading the memo of the law, they have concerns about FBI agents being targeted with violence if they're revealed. This reads like concerns about a mob boss or a terrorist group. But it's about Donald Trump, the leader of the Republican Party, and that's where you are. And getting back to politics, President Biden last night calling MAGA semi-fascist. There you go, folks. Fascism is the idea of embracing violence to acquire and retain political power. That's what that reads like to me. It's very frightening.